Um, welcome to our site. Uh, for those that are new to us, we ask that you would like, subscribe, and share. And for those who would like to also support us financially, we have some links where you can support us financially and uh, be a part of our family, as you will. If you need to uh, speak to me, just send me an email, and I will gladly return your requests. So thank you again, and I do appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are finishing up today. I wanted to finish up yesterday, but I felt the need to finish up here today. Some add some additional information concerning the heart. And we are looking at the final chamber, if you will, that is a part of the heart. And that is where the emotion of mankind resides. And we know that the Bible tells us that we are in his image and his likeness. So when we are looking at who we are, we are actually actually looking at who God is, seeing that he is a, um, he ha he's a spirit with a soul, and he has a body. And we are going to study the body as well, because we started our study um, looking at um, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, we talked about presenting your uh, you, your whole body, your spirit, the body, your soul, and your body blameless before the Lord. And so we started with our spirit. Uh, we have uh, looked at the soul. We looked at different chambers within uh, the soul. We saw that the soul is made up of our mind, the will, and the emotion part. And we started the emotion uh, yesterday. So we going to finish up, tidy up a few things, and then we will move on and go into the body, which most of us are familiar with, you know. So uh, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 6, and what I'm going to do is read um, several uh, verses so you can see for yourself that uh, the heart of mankind, um, the emotion resides there. And then we're going to excavate a few as we move forward in it. And Genesis chapter 6, verses 6. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So we see that the emotions, as we are beginning to look closer into the different chambers, which we started yesterday, is resides in the heart of mankind. And We've been talking about what the emotion does. It creates a stamp on that situation that you are, you have uh, uh, that came to you in a thought uh, that you decided to take. Uh, take no thought, saying that you decided that thought is yours. And uh, what happened was you place an emotional stamp to that, and then it is deposited in your heart. And whenever that situation arise again, you will be, uh, because you're programmed um, to respond to that specific situation based on that, what I just mentioned to you, those feelings will come back up and it will bring the thought and it will bring all the things and then it will, um, you know, uh, put many principles in place, it'll trigger imagination, all kinds of stuff, fearfulness. Uh, uh, when you have been stored, when a thought has been stored in you, when you are not uh, storing the Word of God, everything else will be based on fearfulness and uh, uh, all of those type uh, thought patterns, and we saw what they were. So let's continue in Ecclesiastics chapter 11, verses 10. So remove grief and anger from your heart and put away pain from your body because childhood and uh, prime of your life are feelings, are fleeting. So we see here that grief and anger, uh, these emotions are in your heart. Remove them from your heart. And so we are getting a closer look and see where our emotions um, reside. And you'll see some beautiful scripture as we go forward when it talks about the heart and how God really 
is towards us in our heart when we are in pain and so forth. It's beautiful stuff, man. When you see these scriptures, and um, uh, you will see how God truly loves us and cares for us. Um, my hope, as you are studying these particular um, aspects of yourself, is that when you read the Word of God, it becomes different. You will see that, according to the Scripture, it says that the Word of God is able to split the soul and the spirit. So when you read the Word, you will read the Word with your spirit, soul, and body. So you'll see how it feeds the entirety of you. And uh, as you need scriptures for each aspect of your life, and areas of your life, and areas of your being, you can look and seek out scriptures for such. Ecclesiastic, so remove grief and anger from your heart. And so, and put away pain. And the pain is in your body, it states. So we see in Ecclesiastes 7, 9, it reads this way. Do not be eager in your heart to be angry, for anger resides in the bosom of fools. So that emotion, again, is residing there. And it is our responsibility to remove grief and anger from your heart. How do we do that? We've been talking about the Word of God has the ability to save the soul. So everything that we do on this planet and ever will do on this planet will always be about the Word of God because the Scripture did say, I hold my, my Word above my name, which is the name of that statement in the book of Psalms. So, Jeremiah thirty two forty one. I will rejoice over them to do them good and will faithfully plan them in the land with all my heart and with all my soul. And so this rejoice, rejoice, uh, he is talking about that being in the heart. And, of course, we know that the heart is the uh, the very chamber, the essence of man, because the Bible tells us that God knows the essence of man, the intent of the heart, the why you do what you do. So God tells us that uh, jo uh, uh, joy, joy resides there, and we'll see that even more clearly. Proverbs fourteen thirteen, even in laughter. The heart may ache, and the end of joy may be grief. And you see these deep emotions that are residing there, living there. And when you are, um, you know, dealing with situations in your life, again, I want you guys to be equipped with information uh, so that you can deal with each and every situation that comes into your life. The purpose of learning all of these things is to recognize that your subconscious, which is your soul, is a uh, entity, a part of you that is designed to meditate. And it meditates all day long. And what God said to us, he said to us, he said, you're going to be meditating. So what you should do, meditate on the word. If you keep this word, my word, um, before you meditate on it day and night, the results will be this. And he gives us what the results will be. So you and I, as I mentioned many times, we are meditating all day long. And so we are um, required uh, because our being is designed to do that, to meditate, and we cannot help ourselves. And so when we meditate on whatever we are, we're making deposits in us. Um, our emotions are an expression of those deposits that have been made in us. And we express our emotions, uh, our anger, our, our joyfulness, our, our grief, all of those things because they are there because of a result of some deposits that we have placed in our memory bank, if you will. 
and when a situation comes, it will uh, uh, go to that memory bank and it will then bring it up. And that's how we move our lives. This is how we make our decisions. This is how we uh, confess. This is how uh, we act. This is all of this stuff. It's because of what was deposited in your life as a young individual being on this earth. And so we see then that all of laughter, even laughter uh, um, in the heart, even in laughter, the heart may ache, but the end of joy may be grief. A joyful heart is good medicine, uh, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I have seen um, laughter heal people. And um, there was a, a pretty famous story, and I can't remember who the gentleman was, but I remember hearing it um, early on in my life when I was studying about personal development and all of those different things and um, walking through pain. But this gentleman had some means, and what he did, he was in the hospital dying. And he told his people to make sure that he brought, they brought all the um, old uh, uh, comedy stuff. And they brought all these tapes and whatever. And he played that, and he lived. He walked out of the hospital, even though he was about to die. Why is that? Because it tells us that a joyful heart is good medicine. And so um, when one begins to uh, saturate, because the scripture did say the principle is this, as out of the abundance of one man's heart, that's what he will then speak. And speaking in the speaking, because when we have deposited in our heart, it is, and it, and it receives that emotional stamp, we have owned it. We actually believe everything that uh, just that thought. We actually believe it. And so a joyful heart is good medicine. Psalms 119.7, I will praise you with an upright heart. And so we see then that all of our emotions that are from mankind is residing in that uh, uh, chamber, the very last chamber within the soul of man. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. And so... I will tell of your wonderful deeds. Uh, so we know that thanksgiving and praising God, it comes from that space. And Jesus said, you ought to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all, all of you, all of your substance. And so you're loving him with what? Let me say that. With your thoughts, with your will with your emotions, with you, your heart, your intent, your everything. And so he said, search me with all your heart and you will find me. Someone in that condition that is searching God like that, it would be a mist of God to not meet them. I believe he would really want to meet you because if you're searching for him like that, oh my God, he's going to show you some stuff because you are sold out, if you will. And if you're sold out and you're seeking him that way, you are focused on getting to know who he is. Proverbs 10, 8. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. And we know that the word of God uh, will come into our hearts and made us, make us wise. We talked about that yesterday, about God sending pastors that will teach us, and as a result of them teaching us pastors after his own heart, that one of the um, benefits to that congregation is that we become wise. Wisdom is strong within that congregation. So, uh, Psalms 31, 24, be strong and let your heart take courage. All you 
who wait on the Lord. So we see then that courage comes from that place. And every time you see God talk to his people, um, he always tells us to be courageous. Because remember when we become born again, that new spirit that he gave us, God has given us a spirit that he doesn't understand, he's not fearful. So where does the fear then reside? It resides in the soul, in the emotion of the man. And God always comes and says, be courageous, be courageous, be courageous. And so I want to encourage you guys to be courageous. Proverbs 15, 13, a a glad heart makes a cheerful face. Uh, but, a, but by sorrow, a heart, the spirit is crushed. So we see then the power of our emotion and the power of our choices. It, uh, God needs to come and excavate all of those things. That's why you don't get frustrated when you don't see things right away in your life because you have been programmed and it takes time to unprogram you and because it's such a part of you and it's been a part of you for 30 40 years maybe more uh, those who come to the lord uh, even after you've come to the lord you, you've been saved for x amount of years and your life has been a one of circular uh, progression meaning you just have moved and because you have been so relying on the old program that you haven't committed yourself to the new program, and a new program will bear fruit, but it's going to cost you something. And the Bible said earlier, as we read in the scriptures, it's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you um, uh, to become a disciple because it tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse um, verses, uh, chapter 11, verses 10. So, Remove great grief and anger from your heart. So remove all of those programs. It is our responsibility to remove the programs. And I call it lazy Christians, where they they get born again and they never, you know, they leave everything up. You know, God will do it. You know, He says, Jesus said, pick up your cross and walk. You lazy. Uh, so you have to pick up your cross and follow Him. He tells us to do that. And uh, that's why you're in your circular uh, lifestyle, because you haven't moved, because you haven't picked up and walked. And so you get angry, you become hateful against God, you turn on God uh, because you didn't, you know, God didn't come up and show up on your timeline because you needed it right away and your heart is cold and, and hard and all these things. And the Bible tells us, be very careful about that because the, it was the hardness of Pharaoh's heart that turned God uh, destroy a whole nation because of that, the hardness of his heart. So you need to be very careful about that because the Bible speaks about that as well. So you and I are called to so remove means that you got some work to do and you need to get yourself together and uh, allow the word of God. Ask the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is here, you know. That's why the Holy Spirit is here. So be mindful that the Holy Spirit is here to guide you in all truth. Psalms 34, 18, one of my favorite psalms. We get into a couple of some of my favorite psalms that help me to uh, get past uh, broken relationships that I had and uh, broken expectations uh, that I got from my marriage, you know, my first and second marriage. Uh, was broken expectations um, from people, and um, my heart was broken. And this psalm was my comfort. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save the crushed in spirit. You know, those guys, you that have been through relationship and so forth, that when you're in that state of brokenheartedness, your emotions are all over the place. I mean, just a wind blowing and, uh, um, you, you know, you're, you're all a mess. And uh, you have a companion. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, but you got to 
call on him. It tells us in Psalm 147, 3, that he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. What a picture, man, that when you're at your lowest emotionally, when you're broken because your heart, it says broken hearted, when your heart, your inner being, you, your essence is broken and you are a mess on the floor. God is there to heal you. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up your wounds. And that's why, because your emotion re resides there. And we talk about, he says, I, I hate those folks. Where that comes from, my soul hates those. So it's there in him. So he understands those emotions. He understands the brokenheartedness because remember, when he created man in Genesis, and the Lord regretted that he made this man. He took, in our time, he took 6,000 years to um, actually make and, and cre recreate the earth. That was damaged due to the fall of the angels. He recreated things, and then he created a few other things. And he placed us there. And then what we did uh, when, uh, uh, with the introduction of the, the Nephilim and all these guys um, that came in and uh, destroyed what he had made, and it grieved him to his heart. And so he knows what that feeling is, that emotion of brokenness, and he is able to heal you. Isaiah 65, 14, my servants will sing out loud, uh, out of joy. My, my servants will sing out of joy, out of their hearts. But you will cry out for anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. And so you see that your spirit also can be uh, broken and your heart also can be broken. So you see this emotional um mishmash of, of things there. My servants will sing out of joy of their heart, but you will cry out of anguish in of your heart. So uh this heart of ours um houses one of the chambers within the heart is our emotion. And that emotion as I said is the stamp by which we claim something as ours. You'll see different states that we find ourselves, emotional states that God speaks specifically to. Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything. Anxiety um, is one of the most, I mean, there's a lot of money, drugs that are being, uh, pharma, pharmaceutical companies are making billions off of anxiety. Why? Because those guys that, and I, and I told you guys, I, I look at the world out of two lenses. Those that are in the kingdom of God and those that are in the kingdom of darkness. And that's it. And so we, um, the kingdom of God, when you look at the world, you see these pharmaceutical guys making billions of dollars on the sickness within the world, you know, all the anxiety and all that stuff. But when one becomes born again, all of those sicknesses from the world, we are free from them. We are delivered. The price has been paid. We are redeemed. We ought not to be anxious. We ought not to be sick. The children of Israel, when they were delivered from Egypt, this is one of the things that will manifest in the church in the end of time, I believe, is that when they were preparing to leave the earth or leave Egypt, one of the things that they left with us, several things was the wealth of the Egyptian, number two. And we're not going to leave with it. We're going to acquire it to get things done because we have to change systems. One of the things is the finances. And it's Jesus said, God told them, he says, ask them for their wealth. Go whisper. And it says when they went and asked, the Bible says great favor was upon them and they gave them all the things. Great favor was on, them, on the children of Israel, but they had to go and ask. So it was God's favor and their uh, their um, faith, just like the scripture says, for by grace are you saved 
through faith. It is a gift of God. That process by which we operate in is able to strip the wealth from the, the world and acquire it so that we can do things. So there's another thing that God did for the children of Israel while they were leaving Egypt. And that was all of the people were healthy, 100% health care. They had no sickness amongst them, no feeble amongst them, the word says. Another thing was that their clothing, their provision in the wilderness, they were provided for supernaturally. All of these things were hallmarks of one's deliverance. And we, uh, many of us haven't experienced any of it, just basically salvation, but nothing else. And so um, these different states, anxiety and all of these things that, are, that you're familiar with because you were, uh, it has been deposited in your soul. And so you and I are required, according to the Word of God, to save the soul. How do we now appropriate what has been done for us? We appropriate it by faith, uh, believing God's Word. But first, we need to make some deposits. We need to go find the Word, find the Word, and then begin to meditate on it, formulating the thoughts within our being. And then we have to make a decision about the Word of God concerning our sickness and disease. And then once we make a decision about that, there's going to be an emotional stamp to that. And once it is emotionally stamped, it will drop into our hearts, we will wake up, and our healing will be present because we have exercised faith. We believe God's Word. When sickness comes, we will then recite the Word of God, believing it, not just saying it, but believing it, and it will bring results. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 states, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. This is what I'm talking about. This is Christians. These programs are still within us. Put them away from you. Uh, Ephesians 4, um, 31 states. So we have to put them away from us. And we saw what the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 10. So remove grief and anger from your heart. It is our responsibility. Ephesians 4, 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgives you. The Bible says the just shall live by faith, we walk by faith, and not by sight.